What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Before we get started, real quick, please do consider subscribing. Every subscription does help more than you know. All right, so now that that's out of the way, today's video I wanted to talk about one reload one and why it sucks. However, as I was thinking about what to say and how I wanted to explain it and the reasons why, I realized that I'd have to talk about things that I haven't had the chance to talk to everyone about. And that would be uh, the three common malfunctions. So you've got a type one, type two, type three. Type one is a failure to feed or a failure to fire. Uh, type two is a stove pipe. And then a type three is a double feed. So I wanna to talk to you guys about each one you know, independently and how to clear them, thoughts about it. And these are all things that you guys can do at home with dummy rounds, which is what I'm using here to show you guys uh, how to work these. This is something that you should definitely learn how to do. You should practice it at home in a safe environment, and then you can go to the indoor range or to your outdoor range and practice it with live ammo. But there are a few things that I will also uh, say as the video goes on that you should really keep in mind and be safe about. All right, so a type one malfunction, failure to feed or failure to fire, uh, that can be caused by not properly seating the magazine all the way, or maybe it's fully seated, but maybe it's a bad round. So it's light primer strike, that primer doesn't go off and it doesn't cost the round to go off. So for the first one, magazine not being fully seated, and okay, gun is empty, there's no real ammo in the room, and these are dummy rounds that I'm using. So not loading the magazine all the way, or not fully seating the magazine, it's quite possible for you to drive the magazine into the magwell, and it looks like it's fully seated, but it's not. That's fully seated. So at this point, if I was to rack the gun, it would pick up a round from the magazine and load it into the chamber of the firearm. However, if it's like this, where it's slightly lower and it's not fully seated, then I can rack this all day long and it's not going to pick up around from the magazine. So I might have you know, come up, inserted my magazine, racked it, put the gun away, gotten ready for my shoot, come up, shoot, and all I hear is a click and nothing happens. Again, it's because I didn't fully seat the magazine. So in that case, you could go into remedial action, which is tap, rack, bang. I don't really like it because it's suggesting the tap, the word tap is kind of suggesting that you just kind of give it a little tap when realistically you want to slam the base plate, the bottom of the magazine. You want to slam it with the palm of your hand. You come up, you hear just a little click. You look at the ejection port, you identify that there isn't, uh, that is it, that it isn't a type two or a type three malfunction. You look, so now you're slamming it, now you're racking it, and then that should have put a good round in there, and when you pull the trigger, the gun should go bang, it should go off. Now another thing that could cause a type one malfunction might be it's fully seated, you come up, you shoot your first round, but during the recoil, of the gun, the recoil impulse, maybe your finger, maybe your hand, your palm, something accidentally pressed down on the magazine release button, especially if you have an extended magazine release button. All right, so a type two stovepipe, um, that's a failure to eject. So it's a, it can be known as a stovepipe, it can be known as a failure to eject, or it can be known as a type two malfunction. So I'm gonna load two rounds into the magazine, and then the third, should be a casing, but I don't have a casing, so loading this. There's a round in the chamber. I'm gonna pull back slightly. I'm gonna put the empty brass, or in this case, this dud round, into the ejection port. So that is what it would look like if you were a shooter. All right, like that. So in the traditional old school way of teaching things, you'd come up, you try pulling the trigger. It's mushy, again. I already showed you the site. You can look at the ejection port, which you should. And that's kind of the point that I'm trying to drive home today in this video is always look, if you feel a dead trigger, look at the ejection port. Identify what the issue is. 
Again, old school instructors will tell you tap, rack, bang. So tapping, racking, reason why I don't like it. That's gonna get rid of this, but it's also going to extract a perfectly good round. So now I'm down a perfectly good round. And if I am in a firefight for my life and I'm exchanging rounds with some bad guy, I don't wanna get rid of a perfectly good round. I want every single round that I can have at my disposal. So hopefully you guys can see this. And actually I'm gonna do this right-handed. So you would come up, tap, rack. There goes the bad casing that was sticking up. And there goes the perfectly good round that was in the chamber of the barrel or in the chamber of the gun. And now I can go ahead and I can fire. Again, I lost a round. So I don't like that. The second way, the more modern way, and the faster way of doing things. All right, so I've got one in there, loaded another one up in here, and thankfully I have five of these. I'm going to set it up the exact same way. All right, so again, that's what you would see, just like that. All right, if I can get it to focus. So instead of doing the tap rack, and all of that, I just go to pull the trigger, I feel that it's dead, I look at the ejection port, I identify that it's a type two stove pipe, and I simply with my support hand, come up, get rid of it, and then I can shoot. That's a heck of a lot faster, and I didn't lose a round. So what did I use? I used between the second and the third knuckle of my index finger to basically karate chop and go backwards. So I'm just, hitting it like that and coming back forward. Now if you have a um, if you have a red dot, if you have like a Trijicon RMR or a shield, whatever those sights are, and the, the rear sight, your backup sight, is behind the RMR, and essentially you can just come up, and I, let's see, can I show it? Yes I can. What I would do, and what I have been doing, is I would come in between because my RMR would be like right here, right? So I would come in with my thumb in between my RMR and the casing that's sticking up and then I would rotate my thumb and then I would pull away both, all right? So I'm breaking them apart. I'm not going forward with it because if I go forward and my finger's on the trigger, then I can potentially shoot my own hand, shoot a finger off, and it's gonna be a bad day. But if I come around and then I break them both, then I'm still getting rid of that round, and then I can just come back and keep shooting. All right? So that is a real quick and dirty way of how to clear type two, which is what I set up. And again, I don't want to practice the reverse karate chop with uh, any type of red dot because of the casing, sometimes that glass, to my understanding, can be coated. And RMR is not cheap. <laughs> They're, what, five to 600 bucks? I practiced this reverse karate chop clearing a type two malfunction probably five, six times every time that I go shooting. And then I practice it multiple times here at home as I'm watching TV, I'll just set it up and just, oh, no, look at the ejection port, identify the issue and get it done. Um, so if I'm, if I'm doing that reverse karate chop, one, I can't go all the way and two, whether it's a steel casing or a brass casing that I'm using, it's going to be hitting that window, that glass, and I might be messing up the film or potentially eventually nicking the glass. And for 600 bucks for my RMR, yeah, I don't wanna do that. I'll do it in a real situation, but not in practice, because I'm doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds of repetition uh, that, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. So a way that I found, again, around it, just put your finger in, in between your RMR and the casing that's sticking up, and then break away both sides. All right, guys, so a type three malfunction, AKA a double feed. Uh, I'm gonna set that up, that is the last one. I'm gonna take one of the dummy rounds, I'm going to drop it into the chamber. All right, so there goes that. And then I'm gonna take a magazine with more dummy rounds. And this is where you really have to be careful, guys. When you're practicing this with real ammo, at the range, all right, do not, I repeat, do not drop the slide 
when setting this up. All right, so essentially don't press on your slide stop slide release and let it do this. Don't let it do that. That can end in a very bad day. Uh, the pointy end of the bullet could potentially come up and hit your primer and it could potentially cause that primer to go off. Chances of it happening, very unlikely, but it has happened to a few individuals and at that point they've got an open chamber, they've got you know the ejection port open, rounds go off, metal's going everywhere, hot gas is going everywhere, it can be a very bad day. So don't do that. All right, so if you're going to practice this with live ammo, simply guide the slide forward after pressing down on your slide release. So just set it up that way, all right? All right, so now once you've done that, this one, there are some instructors that'll tell you that you can pull back on the slide and press your magazine release button and that the magazine is just gonna naturally fall out. Um, of all the times that I've tried it, maybe a handful of times has that actually worked. Most of the time it doesn't. So for this one, for your right-handed individuals, you would, you're shooting, you now feel a dead trigger. You look at your ejection port by pointing the gun slightly up. You identify that it is um, a double feed. And now you don't go into remedial action, tap, rack, bang, because that's not gonna do anything. I can tap, I can rack this. It's not doing anything. It's not clearing anything. Which is why, again, I'm trying to drive home the point of if there is a malfunction with your gun, you take one quick second to look at the ejection port to identify what the issue is. Because tap, rack, bang, AKA remedial action does not clear all malfunctions. It can make things worse or it can make you lose time. And if you're in a real gunfight, again, you don't wanna be behind the curve. You wanna be ahead of it. You don't wanna waste time doing things that you don't necessarily need to do and that aren't going to help you out. So. If I'm shooting and all of a sudden I feel a dead trigger or a mushy trigger, I'm going to look, I identify. At this point, as a left-handed individual, I would put my hands here, pull back, hoping that my index finger or my middle finger are going to be able to curve up and uh, lock, the slide, lock the slide to the rear. Press on the magazine and you would rip it out. Rack a few times to make sure that the issue is resolved and then you would load a new round in there and get back to shooting. Now for you right-handed individuals, it's pretty much um, the same way. Let's see, I've got one round. All right, I'm trying to set up. I'm loading this in there. There it is. So for you right-handed individuals, again, same thing, mushy trigger, look at the ejection port, push up on the slide stop slide release while you're pulling back. Then press on your magazine. You might have to rip that thing out. If you do, there should be two rounds that come out. If it's your only magazine, you're not gonna drop it on the ground, you're gonna save it. If you've got more magazines, drop that magazine to the ground and just go into a speed reload and get back into the fight. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. I hope that that is useful to you. Again, please do consider subscribing. Every subscription does help. Uh, hit that like, comment, and share the video. Next video for guns will be One Reload One and Why It Sucks. So stay tuned and again, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know when that video drops. Take care, guys. Thanks.